Hey everyone, my name is Becky, I have ME, and this is my ME. Oh, wow, have I got things to tell you. I'm sorry I've been away, I really am. Things have been happening, I've had to have um, a lot of dental surgery. Um, I started to record that process, uh, but the trauma on my body made me um, really sick for quite some time and I'm still trying to recover and I've still got more to go so excuse me if I cover my mouth or anything while I talk but it's a mess in there right now but the most important thing I guess that's happening is um, I'm about to lose my home because of my illness it is because of my illness I have housing officer she's been here for years and she's known for a long time how ill I am and how I'm struggling how I'm trying my best but I'm struggling and now all of a sudden they want me gone because I'm struggling to look after the house so because my gardens are unkempt especially in the summer you know I struggle I can't I can't do the strimming, I can't do any of that, and Connor can't do it either. So we really, really struggle, and she knows this. I've already talked to you guys about um, the social services, social worker who came out, who just didn't care, really, it was just like, no, if you don't want someone to wipe your backside, or come and warm a meal up in the microwave, then we're not interested it's all just pay for itself I can't afford to pay for it myself oh, I don't know what to do anymore I just I don't know I feel so broken so broken on top of already feeling broken feeling like I can't provide even provide a roof over my son's head now I'm scared. I'm so scared. I've emailed every disability charity rights person that I can to see if I can get any advice or any help or signposting to somebody who can help me. I've heard back from one person today. Emmy Connect emailed me the very next day, uh, which was today. Because I got this letter yesterday. I did nothing but cry and panic yesterday. I messaged everybody, even like my mum. My mum's there's a meeting. She's this housing officer's coming with an enforcement officer on the seventh of June to come talk to me. And my mum said she's going to be there because this woman has lied. This housing officer has lied. This is the best bit. The bit that's really got me mad. Really got me mad was she said that she had tr she had visited the house, she tried to see me or she visited me, unannounced she'd come to the house and knock the door and that I was either out or choosing not to answer the door. Maybe because I can't answer the door some days, maybe because I can't walk on those days. I don't choose to be disabled. I don't choose to not be able to walk down the stairs. I don't choose any of this. The ME Association emailed me back just straight away, straight away like the very next morning and they apologized for the delay. And then I sent an email and then they've just sent one back. I highly recommend them for advice. Um, they are having one of their doctors write a letter to this this housing woman to explain how Emmy suffers can struggle to keep up with their home and things and garden, which you know is, is great. Anything, right? <laughs> I'm trying to get a hold of my doctor yesterday to get a letter from them. Couldn't get through to anybody. So I'm going to call again Monday and try and get a letter from them if I can and hopefully I won't have to pay, but oh man, I'll probably have to pay. I'm just broken on top of broken right now. I 
don't know how much more this life can throw at me right now. This illness is taking everything from me. Everything. I said to my son yesterday, you'd probably be better off without me. You'd be better off living with daddy. He can look after you better. He can keep a roof over your head. He said I was his rock. I don't know how much more I can take. I'm sorry, I'm such an ugly cryer. My nose, I look like a freaking Rudolph. Sorry, I just had to compose myself off camera a minute. You know, she didn't come and leave. She's saying when she came to visit, she left calling cards. There's no calling cards. No calling cards. I'm telling you that she did not leave one. Anything that gets through our door, comes through our door, gets put on the side. And then I look through it. So I know she didn't. She's uh, accusing me of not reporting on repairs. But the repairs she's accusing me of not reporting, I reported a long time ago. My mum and I met with this woman and gave her a list of all the things that needed doing, including the kitchen, because the kitchen floor was going funny. Years later, I'm now told that my kitchen floor is dangerous and I'm being accused of not reporting all this. This woman is heartless and she's cruel because she knows how much I struggle. I feel, personally, that they just won't get rid of me. Like, oh, she's struggling to keep the house nice, so just get rid of her. Get rid of her, get someone else in. They don't want the burden. My stepdad's looked into the vulnerable tenant policy that they have, the landlord has, and he's, he said he's gonna write a letter, so I don't know if that'll help. I just feel like the more people I can get to help, or like the more people I can get to say to this woman, look, she's struggling, and I feel like I need an advocate, that's what I feel, because it's like me against her, and because I'm ill and I'm weak, she feels she can say what and do what she likes and she's lying she's flat out lying she's saying that i refused access to people who have come to do some check electrical check which they'd already been twice by the way um and they I, you know never not refused them access at all on the 6th of April I had an appointment, on the 5th of April, and I have the proof in my phone, I called them to cancel. I called them to cancel because I wasn't well, Connor wasn't here, and I wouldn't be able to get down the stairs. I am so scared. I just don't know anymore. Why have I got to lose everything? I don't want to lose my home. We've been here like 16, 17 years. Never had a problem. Never had a problem until I fell ill. And then I had problems doing the garden because I was struggling to keep up with the inside of the house. I couldn't do the outside as often. But it was being done. I was still doing it. But I've got worse and I've deteriorated. And now here I am. She's making out like I don't engage. I haven't engaged with her. I have. I've met with her every single time. Every time we've had an appointment, I've met with her. I've always met with her. She said I had to engage with like social services, which I did. That got nowhere, because I was hoping for something, some kind of help. They said I'd get some help, maybe to someone to pop the bins out for me. That never materialised. I am so scared. There's meetings next week. Well, I guess that's, that's what I wanted to say for now. I am fighting to save my home, I guess, to keep my home. I'm praying we can stay here. Because I think everybody wants me to move. Because it's going to be hell with an autistic person to move out. It's going to be hell and I can't do anything, I'm useless. I can't lift things or do much. Anyway, I'm gonna go. Just thought I would update you all as to 
the journey of my life. <laughs> so that's it. I just wanted to update you all, really. Because, well, you can see, it's just one bad thing after another in this family, to me. I'm almost 40 now. How much longer? Anyway, I'm gonna go. And I'll do another video as soon as I can, try and update you on what's happening. If you're new and you want to join me on my journey through this illness that's taking everything from me and through life. And I can't even know, I just don't know. Hopefully I will see you very soon.